Ian's going to take us to the Matisse workshop now, so stay tuned. Right, to the bikes, chaps. Right, I'm not sure where the uh, Matisse factory is from here, but I think it's only about uh, something like six miles or something. Okay, we're off. So I'm following uh, Ian on his tracer, and they've got Jeff and Dan safely behind. I'm not sure if they know where, where we're going, so we'll keep well bunched up. Anyway, it turns out Ian uh, used to be in the Met Police, and uh, was instrumental, actually, I understand, in the setup of the Bike Safe course that I did last year. And uh, even got an MBE for his troubles. So, uh, Hopefully he won't mind me telling you that. So to the uh, Matisse workshops then. It's going to be uh, interesting because th this time last week, coincidentally, I was at the Ducati factory in Italy. And uh, I imagine this is going to be a whole lot different. Not necessarily in a bad way though, because of course uh, Matisse is a, obviously a very low volume uh, manufacturer. It'll be interesting to find out exactly how many bikes they do make and how they go about it, but uh, a bit like buses, you never go to a motorcycle factory and then you go to two in a week. What a lovely day now, 11 and a half degrees, properly spring-like, splendid. Well this is very posh, we've just turned into the Carswell Golf and Country Club, which, uh, oh, and this says Matisse on the gate, so the workshops are obviously in the grounds here, oh very nice. Here we are. Brilliant. So here we are, the Matisse workshops. Splendid. <laughs> Splendid. Wow, it smells good in here. It's got that smell of proper workshops. <laughs> yeah, proper workshops yeah, yeah. Jerry, Jerry is proper. Jerry is a man that uh, saved Matisse and uh, is taking it forward to the next level basically at the end of the day. Um, I'll let Jerry tell you about some of the ideas but as I say in, uh, in future we hope to have a, a bigger factory uh, where you can see the bikes being built, a museum um, and a bit of a destination for bikers to come out and have a ride out and have a look around the factory. Sounds good to me. Excellent. And this is the most famous customer here of course. Indeed. Under the umbrella. Stop right in there. <laughs> so which bike was that then, Jerry? That was is that the, the Mark III? The Mark III, right, right. The, um, and originally that, and the Mark III Scrambles frame, you know, that they'd uh, bought out in 61. And that had the Triumph engine, yeah? Yeah, well, that one would have done it. They'd have had different sort of fitments, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, doesn't he look young there? Well, he was, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah well, he good, it. Was it 1966? 66, yeah. 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 Okay. So he'd have been oh, 36, wouldn't he? Well, he was only 19, wouldn't he? 80, you know, he'd be 50 and 80, wouldn't he? Yeah, because the, uh, the bikes Jerry uh, produces are the only licensed replicas for the McQueen family. Um, so the McQueen family are involved as such and uh, licensed the bikes out. Uh, yep. 300 was the uh, original thing. Yeah, the limited it? edition, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And is the 300 because that's what they let you do, or is that to do no, with small, it, it special number, vehical production? It's the number I chose, actually, oh, okay, at right. the time. Yeah. And how many, how many have you made so far? Oh, goodness. Not that many. Um, probably about 120. Okay. And yeah. how long does it take, typically, to make one? To make one complete, probably about three weeks from start to finish. That's making the frame as well. Yeah, yeah. That's making all your components, yeah. And what, what, what do you do here in terms of manufacture? So do you make the frames well, here? Well, it's do you now do more of an assembly area now. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah because I get to, because it's not, it's more economic. You get it done out of house now. Yeah. And um, you can quality control it better. You can, it's all, also much more efficient. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we can just get on and keep a nice clean situation where you just do assembly, you know. And what, uh, what sort of volume of bikes do you make? How, are you making what? How many a month would you make? 
Well, it's taken me 120 or... to do it in, in just over 10 years, so... Right, okay, so it, it depends on all <laughs> so, of I guess. Well, how's your maths? <laughs> well, not, not that good. <laughs> How's it done? Are, are they built to order, so you'd say, oh, well, yeah, I want one, yeah, and they're, and they're yeah, tailored to the individual yeah, customers, yeah, is that the yeah. way it works? That's right. Right, excellent. Yeah, well, they're always the same bike. They yeah, sure, been, sure, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the bike. Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. So how much latitude is there if, if you said, oh, well, what, a slightly different exhaust? Well, or... the exhaust got to be the same. It's got to be exactly the same in appearance. We do do a, a road pack for it. Yeah. For the road, which uh, everything is bolt on. Mm -hmm. So everything will be taken off and got back to that original so, bike, you uh, see. And if I want to buy one, how long would I have to wait for one? To buy one? Yeah. Probably about eight weeks. Oh, OK, so pretty rapid turnaround then. Yeah, so. quite and, and about that's how much that's... money would I have to have in my little mortgage pot? Well, for a desert racer like that, a yep. proper desert racer, it's fourteen nine fifty. Oh wow! Plus the dreaded, of course. Yeah, yeah, indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah. indeed. By which yeah. you mean what VAT? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so mm, about 18, 19, 19 grand. So actually, a pretty for a, for a sort of bespoke handmade yeah, bike. It's a that's, handmade bike. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, it's not overdue. It's not a ridiculous price and, by any uh, means. They are rather as attractive looking thing. Yeah, yeah, let's go have a look at some, shall we? That looks, yeah. that looks amazing. So what's yeah. that one we're looking well, at there then? That one there, um, the facing you, is a yep. true uh, desert, desert racer. It is a beautiful looking machine, isn't it? And this, uh, the engine in here, Jerry, is a Triumph, I can a see. Triumph 16, yep. yeah. So how do you source those then? Well, they mostly come back from America. Right. Um, and I have a guy who overhauls them for me. Um, he actually gets them back from America. And he does it. I sit and I just buy the units off him. Right. Then, you know. Right. Mm. And presumably it must be getting quite hard to source them, isn't it? Well, it's getting more difficult as time goes by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and presumably that, that has an impact on price as well, because... Well, it has impact on price. They have gone up. I mean, they originally started off at twelve thousand pounds each. Yep. But they've actually gone up that more because everything else goes up. I mean, it's eleven years after all gone by. Of course. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So um, it naturally goes up. Parts are more expensive. Everything is more expensive. That's a beautiful looking machine, isn't it? it certainly is. Well, I like those welds on there. Mmm. Yeah, they're a special, And what material is that then? 4130 chrome molly tubers. Just been copper plated and nickeled. Looks lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Seen anything you fancy, gents? Wow. This one? Oh, yeah, wow. Crikey. So, this one, Matisse engine then? Yeah, that's when um, we developed this here back in. Uh, we started in 2005 and it was up and running in 2008. So is that the Adelaide, did I read on That's the website? Right, yeah, 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 yeah. And what's, yeah. what's the configuration there? Is that as parallel yeah, twin? Parallel yeah. twin, yeah. Good yeah. yeah. overhead cam, fuel injected. Um, and what displacement is that, 650? or? That's a 997. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. I thought it looked a bit massive. Yeah, and uh, it's quite a beast, isn't it? What it is that? beautiful, isn't it? It's a young man here had ridden it. Have you? Wow, yeah, yeah. yeah. What sort of weight is it? But um, it's about 400 pounds. What's that in kilo? 180, isn't it? Roughly, yeah, about that. Okay, so nice and light, yeah. Yeah, it's a lovely looking thing. Yeah, I like this fairing. It's got a bit of Ducati 999 about it, isn't it? Yeah, and, and the tailpiece is reminiscent to the old uh, small ball racers and things like that in the 70s and 80s. We're not looking at that, I mean, that's truer to the idea of. The cafe racer, the well, Nortons are, are long way. I just had this vision in my head and I wanted to see a 60s looking motorcycle yeah. that had modern engineering that was reliable. Yeah. Yeah. Because you not only that to comply with all the new regulations. Yes, yeah, that's right. And uh, you have to warranty <coughs> everything to a lot of long time and you might as well do a decent job of it and really exactly. make it last, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And when you're producing in small numbers, do you have to adhere with things like Euro 4 or whatever it is now? Um, we or, could, we or do, do you have SBA, an exception? SBA, ah, okay, okay. Yeah, so it's a single vehicle. And um, I think um, we're laid up to so many, I can't remember what the final number is, but it's quite a few, probably approaching 200. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, I mean, it looks lovely. I mean, at the, Doesn't at the museum, the favourite bike that mm. I've taken people it's, around, uh, Bill yeah. Yeah. it was one of the to try again. Yeah. And, 
what are they made of then? Is that fiberglass, right? And do you do those mouldings here as well? Yeah, I've got all the models. Oh, right, yeah. And which model is this then? This That's is a. Mark III. That looks really lightweight as well. Do you know what the sort of weight is? Yeah, 180. Oh, no, sorry. One, one, 300 pounds. What's 300 pounds in kilo? Who just knows? <laughs> Sounds about 120 ish, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah perfect. That's absolutely sort of. It looks lightweight, doesn't it? Rickman scrambler style. Yeah. 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 And is it, is this one the same engine as that? Looks that simple. Yeah, 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 yeah. All yeah. the rolling chassis, uh, everything. Rolling chassis same. Delivery is different. All those panels will fit straight on here. Right. And vice versa. So you can make that bike into that bike if you want it. He crops up each year pretty much, doesn't he now, or seems to. I remember seeing him on a trap last year. Which won't have done him any harm, will it? So this is the engine build section, obviously. Uh, ish, yeah. Ish. <laughs> Right, so we're going through to the uh, production area here. This is the where they actually made. So how many have we got on the go here? One, two, three, four, five, something like that? Yeah. It, it varies because there's obviously a few um, customer bikes coming through. Okay, for, yeah, a bit of fettling. Yeah, that'll be a customer's bike in for refurb and... Wow, that's a bit of a beast, isn't it? Complete with Honda engine. Yeah, well don't forget, in, the, in their day, Matisse were uh, very much a frame to improve your yep. basic bike. Yep. And uh, it's when uh, the Rickman frame became uh, so good in the handling that the Japanese actually sent over engineers to study why and that's when in the late 60s when the Japanese frames started improving I mean the engines were awesome from the day out but yeah of course yeah. the frames didn't match the power out yeah which look at the fact that it's got a drum brake on it sorry say again Jim. I had a 350 Triumph with that um, front brake arrangement yeah came around the corner once with a missus on the back the car turning right in front of it thought can't stop yeah 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 and it doesn't look I mean outside of it which was a dangerous manoeuvre at the time. It doesn't look that substantial, it has to be seen. Yeah, it, the, the brake just went up to the job. And uh, oil in frame as well, so you can see yeah. where the oil goes in here. Correct. Which yeah. is amazing. And so it, not only does it act as the place to store the oil, but it cools it as well. Yeah. And then, uh, what's this down here then, Jeff? This some sort of, is there, is there a pump? Is it pumped around or how does that work? Well, that's, that's a good question. Probably, I would think. I love all this welding on here, look at this. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, you yeah. can tell that it's been hand welded. Yeah, yeah, machine welded. yeah. <coughs> but the, I mean, the silhouette is pure. You can see the Rickman Brothers racing it. Interesting rear brake arrangement as well. That's true, actually, yeah. Because the sprocket's on the same side. Yeah, isn't that wild? Well, there we go, that's another Biker Scrown with Jeff and Dan done and a uh, bit of a look around the Matisse workshop stroke factory. So thank you very much indeed uh, to Ian and to Jerry for letting us uh, have a look around there. It was great, fascinating and what a lovely spot. So Jerry was saying they're going to be building a new, just here somewhere actually, a new sort of visitor centre come weekend bike destination. So give it a couple of years and you'll be able to come up here and uh, ride up because there's some lovely roads around here and immerse yourself in uh, Matisse stuff. Check out this weather now. What an absolutely cracking day for a ride home. Oh, this gets you in the mood for summer. Brilliant. Okay, so I hope I managed to get a little film out of that. If you watched it, then obviously I did, but uh, the sound was a little bit tricky in the workshops there. There's quite a lot of background noise. It's always difficult when you've just got the GoPro with the built-in microphones but uh, hopefully you got to see at least some images from around the workshop there 
I just find those nosing around those sort of places fascinating. But it looks like I'm going to be uh, stuck in amongst the traffic for a lot of the ride home. Such is the lot of the rider in the southeast of England. Anyway, there we go. I won't get on to moaning about that again. Okay, so I hope that was of uh, some interest to you. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.